teachers, parents, teachers, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all for your kind attendance at the 2017 Annual Prize Distribution Day and 2018 Madrasa Registration. As always, we commence our proceedings with remembrance of Allah. As it says in Surah Rad, chapter 13 of the Holy Quran, Now surely, by Allah's remembrance, are the hearts set at rest. We would like to grace this program with the recitation of the Holy Quran by Hussein Jeddi and translation by Shali Zarahat. May I request you all to recite aloud salawat. Remember our brothers and sisters in Yemen, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and other state of terrorist oppressed parts of the world. May Allah elevate their status and grant them a place in Jannah. Al Fatiha. First of all, I would like to welcome you all here today as the student representative for the year 2017. I would like to thank all the teachers and students who helped me throughout the year. We worked together to support many events over the past 12 months, including the annual Madrasa Majlis and the first ever Essex Madrasa Iftar. We hope that these events and other events continue to flourish in the coming year as well. May I request you all to recite a loud salawat. So just a few housekeeping points. Fire escapes are just behind you, and if there is any alarm, please make your way to the car park. Toilets are at the end of the corridor, so when we're finishing the program, adults, please make your way to these toilets for wudu, and students can go in their classes for this before returning to the hall for salah. Please set your mobile phones to mute so that we can encourage our students with full attention. Also, if any young children feel unhappy and noisy, please make your way to the corridors behind me for them to calm down so that it does not affect our students' concentration. 
Many thanks. Salawat. Shia Itna al Shirin Madrasa of Essex first opened this door for the first time in January 2007. Today we have gathered for its 10th annual function. During this time, we have seen Allah knows how many students learning pearls of wisdom from here. To celebrate these past 10 years, we welcome some eminent guests today. Among us, we have President of Council of European Jamaats, Dr. Akbar Muhammad Ali. Salawat. <laughs> we also have President of Madrasa Center of Excellence, Mr. Noshad Mirali, among us and Essex Jamaat President Uncle Fayaz Haji among us as well. Salawat. <laughs> Uncles, many thanks for being here among us. We are really proud to have you here with us. Leaders of the community who drive us forward and provide us with inspiration. Imam Ali Ali Salam famously said, learn your religion, do not just inherit it. We have provided learning resources from our madrasa. <coughs> madrasa operates under the umbrella of Madrasa Centre of Excellence which is an initiative by World Federation. We are lucky to have the President of Madrasa Centre of Excellence, Mr. Noshad Mirali, among us. Please welcome him with a loud salawat. Can, I, can, I, can we continue with Salawat? Slides just uh, are being uploaded. The management team of Shia uh, uh, Islamic uh, Madrasa of Essex, uh, all the parents, and in particular the children, Salamun Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. First of all, I would like to thank the management uh, uh, team of the Madrasa here for inviting me to participate in this uh, uh, magnificent uh, opportunity that you have got of celebrating the 10th anniversary of the establishment of Madrasa. And it is only when you have gone through the Madrasa system that you will realize how much you are gaining from the madrasa, which you will probably never gain after you have left madrasa, because then life becomes very busy, people don't have time, and they might not even have the same opportunity to learn about their religion. So the fact that you are coming to the madrasa is going to help you a lot, not only in this world, but also in the, uh, the, the world hereafter. So my name is Naushad Marali, uh, as I've been introduced, and I would like to just briefly run through what the Madrasa Center of Excellence is about. I've only got 10 minutes, so I will go a bit fast, but I'll be here for the rest of the morning, and if there are any questions that you have got, then please feel free to approach me. Now the Madrasa Center of Excellence was formed by the World Federation about six years ago. And the reason for doing that was to ensure that the madrasa agenda is at the top of every Jamaat's uh, uh, future. Because in the past, there has been a tendency to look at madrasa as a, as a separate part of the Jamaat, 
and they were not give, being given enough support that they, they required. So there was, a, there was a lot of complaints coming through from the teachers, from the parents, from the stu students. So it was decided by the World Federation that no, something should be done seriously. So they held a retreat in Dubai about six years ago, and as a result of that retreat, the formation of the Madrasa Center of Excellence came about. So in a nutshell, all the challenges were discussed over three days of solid discussions, and it was decided that those challenges that were being faced by the Madrasa can be addressed by four different work teams or in four areas. These are the four areas, so developing a curriculum, a curriculum which would be a global curriculum, which would apply to all the madrasas in the community throughout the world. And then that curriculum should be relevant to the times that we are going through. It should be uh, interactive, it should be interesting, and it should be fun for the children. The second area was teacher development, so how to develop the teachers, how to and by, uh, how to uh, instill the skills of uh, teaching and how to make the lessons interesting and exciting. The third area was learning resources because now we are, the times are moving very fast and we have to keep up with uh, what children uh, face in the school. So we have to make sure that we are also running along the same line and the learning resources team has got the challenge of producing resources which are appropriate and relevant for the modern day and for the future. And finally, assessment and evaluation. How is the madrasa doing in terms of achieving the standards and meeting the needs and requirements of the children? Okay, next slide please. Now, the area that I'm going to concentrate on is something that you should all be really excited about. The children, the teachers, and the parents. And this is the curriculum. We have been working on this curriculum for the last five, six years now. And alhamdulillah, finally, finally, we are at the point where we can roll it out in the madrasas. And I'm very, very pleased to say that uh, the your madrasa has decided to implement the curriculum, which is, going to, which is called Tarbiya. And your madrasa will implement it from the beginning of this year, which is fantastic news because in your 10th anniversary, what better present uh, could you get than to have a new curriculum altogether? Right, next one, please. Okay, so why tarbiya? Now, as I said, the tarbiya curriculum is going to be different from what we have been uh, uh, using in the madaris, in most of the madaris throughout the world. Traditionally, we have been teaching, and you children have been learning subjects by subjects. So you have been learning akhlaq, you have been learning fiqh, you have been learning about tariq or history, and you have been learning Quran. Now the purpose of the Tarbiya curriculum is to take a holistic approach to mix everything <coughs> together, because that is how life is. You know, wake you, when you wake up in the morning, you don't say, okay, now I will do this in the first hour, this in the second hour, this in the third hour, and you don't split it up into compartments. Your life is completely mixed, because the whole world is holistic. There are so many things going on in your mind, so you have to deal with each one as it arises, as the need arises. So, and if you look at Life in general, even if you look at the Quran, the Quran is integrated. You know, there are, do you know how many verses there are in the Quran that deal only with fiqh? There are only about 500 verses out of 6,400 or some total. And these verses are not in a separate section or in a separate uh, surah. These verses are all spread out throughout uh, the Quran. Why? Because Allah has made those verses relevant to the subject matter that was being discussed. Whether it was about the history of a prophet, or whether it was about some akhlaq, then Allah decided to put in some thick uh, matters. So the whole curriculum that we are developing, when we have developed Tarbiya, is going to be integrated. So it won't be subject by subject approach, it will be all these subjects taken together. 
Now I'll go through it uh, in a bit more detail to explain how this integration works. And the second very important uh, matter that we have addressed is to make it learner-centered. So traditionally, again, the teaching was only done on the basis of what the teacher wanted to teach. Whereas we have turned the table around and we said, what do the children need to learn? So you teach them what they need to learn, not what the teacher wants to teach. Because you know, half the time the teacher is, is, is teaching something that the children don't require. And it's not going to be useful for their uh, day and age. So uh, uh, in order to take that into account, we have made all the lessons very interactive and very, very learner-centered. So then there are other things that have been taken into account. You know, it is based on a Quranic overview. Uh, it is uh, looking at the modern uh, ways of thinking, uh, what is relevant in the current times, and what are the outcomes that we are getting from each lesson. Okay, next one. Right, so it is, uh, because there are no subjects, we have to structure it in some way. And the way it has been structured is that there are eight modules. So we start with the creator, and we go through the whole cycle and end up back with the creator. So the modules then are the creator and his creation, divine guidance, leading on to Rasulullah, because the divine guidance came in two forms, the Quran and the prophets. So after the message of communicating the message by the Rasulullah, then he handed it over to the Aimma, to all, uh, all our Imams. So they safeguarded the, the message. That was then passed on to um, uh, the, uh, the 12th Imams, and we then are in the, in the current period where the 12th Imam is in Ghaiba, but he is still upholding that message that has been handed down. Moving on to roadmap to self-purification, how do we purify ourselves, and then societal well-being. How do we live within the society that we are uh, uh, mixing with? And finally, back to the creator, the hereafter. So each of these modules has, is then broken up by age groups. So these are the age groups that this curriculum has been broken down into. And you will all uh, be able to, the children will be able to see which ages, which bands they will fall into. So we have got bands A, B, C, D, E. And for each of those bands, for each module, we have got lots of material that will be used for the curriculum. Okay? Right, so what is the process behind creating a lesson? If you can fast, you know, put forward it, because uh, this is a very, very detailed, comprehensive process that uh, we have uh, embarked upon to produce the curriculum. And it takes about two weeks to produce just one lesson. And do you know how many lessons we are producing in total? So over eight modules and six age bands, we have had to produce nearly 600 lessons. Now imagine if one lesson takes two weeks, how long the, uh, does it take to produce 600 lessons? So this is the whole process. I don't want to go into it in a lot of detail. And one thing you might uh, uh, notice is the name of your resident Ali, Sheikh Abbas Ismail, who is one of the people who is uh, responsible for editing these lessons. Because these lessons are written by independent people who have got experience in writing lessons in, in teaching, etc. And then it goes through the whole chain of editing. And there is a whole, you know, it goes about three different uh, uh, edits. And then it goes for teacher, uh, for uh, graphic design. And finally it is signed off by Syed Mohammed Rizvi in Toronto. He signs off every lesson uh, that is produced and that is the final uh, stamp. On, on, on each lesson. Okay, so the lessons are broken down into sort of two uh, uh, phases. The first phase is for the younger children, bands A and B, so four to seven year old children. And because these are children who like activities a lot, who like to read stories, they don't like to go through formal lessons and textbooks <coughs> and things. So for them, we have produced storybooks. 
Uh, this is an example of a storybook, Asia's shiny bow blue bowl. And we are producing at least 100, 220 storybooks. Now these storybooks are of an Islam, have got Islamic content, they've got uh, uh, very short verses of the Holy Quran, and they've got very interesting uh, uh, exercises and activities. And there is a section there for parents as well, which parents can use at home to uh, enhance the learning uh, of the children. Now, briefly, these are the contents that are included in each storybook. So you can see there is a story time, then there is a happy hadith. There is a very short hadith that is included in the story. Then, wow, wonderful why. You know, why does it get dark at night, for example? Because that story is dealing with, with uh, stars and, and, and in this space. Then, uh, dua, dua. There is a very short dua as well in each uh, storybook. Um, and uh, there are some, some other things uh, as well. There is a parent power, a, a power parenting. There is a short verse of the Quran, uh, which children can memorize very quickly. So that is a story, so that is for the younger age. Now we move on to the older age. <coughs> okay, so these are some of the key features in every lesson. So it starts with a Quranic verse that is relevant for that particular lesson. Then it goes to objectives, three main objectives of the lessons. And then moving on to keywords that are going to be used in the lesson, which are in Arabic. And then, uh, did you know, there are some interesting facts as well, which might not be directly related to uh, Islam, but things that uh, you will uh, come across in your uh, education uh, throughout your time. Um, anyway. Okay, then there are reminders along the way, a small husna. You know the 99 beautiful names of Allah? These are mentioned throughout the, the um, uh, uh, lessons from band A up to band uh, F. And all the 99 names are covered uh, in, the, in the curriculum. Um, then there are some, some uh, hadith as well which are, are, are dotted around uh, in, in the lessons. And some, some interesting activities as well. So there's the activities, then finally there are, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, there are key points to remind what the lesson was all about, and then there is a short test, <coughs> which uh, helps with the assessment of the, the learning process. There is also something called uh, just a, uh, faith in action. Faith in action is when children have learned the theory, then how do they apply some of the theory in practice? So for that, we have every lesson has put a faith in action uh, section, one or more, where they can practice putting the theory into, uh, into practical uh, aspects. And then there is a higher level as well. If there are children who are learning fast uh, and they've completed the activity, they can go to the higher level and do some more to uh, increase their learning. Okay? Right, then in addition to the lesson, there is also a, a teaching guide. So the teachers have a teaching guide and a lesson. The children only have the lesson. So the, the teaching guide is very detailed. It explains, it's like a, a, a lesson plan. So the teachers will have a lesson plan for every lesson. And the lesson plan will include what the objectives are, what the title is, uh, what, uh, how can you introduce the topic, and what are the activities that the children, the teachers can use for uh, the lesson to make the lesson interesting and enjoyable for the children. Okay. Yeah? So, uh, uh, very, very briefly, I've covered my five years' work in, uh, in 10 to 10 minutes. Um, but once again, and I think this is, this is a, a fantastic opportunity that you have got, a completely new curriculum, and I am confident, based on the information that, uh, that I'm getting from places, other places where this curriculum is being implemented, 
and the feedback has been very, very positive and very, very encouraging. So, inshallah, you, know, you will give you the same feedback as we go along. Uh, we will support you all the way down, uh, down the line. And uh, uh, as I say, I am around here for the rest of the day. So if you have got any uh, questions, please do ask. Thank you very much and for giving me the opportunity. Asan. Imam Ali al-Islam guides our leadership with this noble saying, Among the people, he is the esteemed one, who observes courtesy when he is elevated. And despite of having power and strength, he keeps observing gentleness. With our President Uncle Fayyaz Haji's permission, I would like to welcome Uncle Akbar Muhammad Ali. Salawa. <laughs> Uh, President Saib, Roshad Bhai from MCE, parents, children, Assalamu uh, Alaikum. I have a great pleasure to be here and I thank uh, your President Fayaz Bhai to have invited me uh, to this uh, gathering. Is it called the Presentation Day or? Annual Presentation Day. Annual Presentation Day uh, of uh, Essex Jamaat. Uh, I'm uh, the President of the Council of European Jamaat. So just a couple of words about what is Council of European Jamaat. So the Council has all our Jamaats in Europe who are members of the Council. And we've got 16 Jamaats, 10 in the UK and 6 in Europe. And Essex is uh, one of our members. Uh, we have created a madrasa network across all the Jamaats over the last two years called SAN, Spiritual Academies Network. And the aim of this is to support madrasas across Europe and especially to network with other madrasas uh, in Europe. So if you take Essex, for example, you are a small jamaat uh, and your resources may be limited in number of teachers, etc. And by networking with other madrasas, you come to learn about the good practices that other madrasas do and get support from Coage, and as Coage, we have employed one uh, uh, manager just to support madrasas across Europe, and uh, she has been in touch with uh, your madrasa. Her name is Mariam Bai Hashem, and she's available for support. One of the other things I find amazing about our Koja community is that wherever we have gone, we have established a center an Imam Barga, and a Madrasa. And Essex is a, is a good example. The other thing I found is, which makes me proud of the Koja community is, that wherever our community has gone, they have not only supported and worked for the Koja community, but they support and have children of other communities as well, especially in the madrasa. And I was talking to your president, and I understand that 50% of the children that you have here are from the Shia community, Afghani, Pakistani, etc. And this is a real pride for the Koja community of how we support the Shia community uh, in different areas. The other thing that amazes me about madrasas is, is the volunteer time that is taken up, especially by the women of our community. And uh, we have uh, the statistics which MCE did at the start when it embarked on the project was that 70% of the teachers 
in our madrasas across the world, more so in the West, are women. And this is giving up their time at the weekend, which, with the busy life that we all lead, is very limited spare time that you get. And mothers and women of our community sacrifice. So I think the madrasa teachers and the volunteers deserve a big salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The reason we established SAN at the college level to support the madrasas was also another main reason was to implement the fantastic work that the MCE at the World Federation has done and you had a good briefing summary uh, from Noshad Bhai. And over the last year, uh, across the madrasas in Europe, we have run 20 teacher training programs, uh, which is the two main ones, the teacher skills program, and I understand later you're going to have the micro-teach from that, uh, and the neuropsychology of learning, which is a unique program for teachers, which we have innovated as a Koja community and through the MCE, where the principle that we used was that all students, all children are not same. And all of us have different personalities and the way we learn is different as adults as, and as children. And the whole idea of the Neuropsychology of Learning program was for teachers to understand themselves first as to how they are as an individual and how that impacts them on studying or, or teaching because they have different styles of teaching as well. And the other thing that we learned was that through the neuropsychological learning is that if the children are different, how can the teaching and the learning be affected by their personality and how we fine-tune the way we teach them, especially Islam. And that has been uh, quite uh, amazing. So if I give you, instead of the theory, one story or one example, there are certain children, and uh, I'm sure the parents will find that and the <coughs> madrasa teachers will find that they don't like sitting still. And one thinks that they are, uh, you know, not paying attention, not listening, etc., etc. But this group are called improvisers who need to be continually being doing something in order to learn better. Okay? There's another group of children who are called catalysts, and they have a need to support other children in their learning. And if those sort of children, the teachers can identify, they can use those children to help other children learn. A third group called stabilizers are a group that likes a very structured program, systematic, which are in contrast to the improvisers who like fun and activity. <laughs> so you can see the contrast that is there in these different groups. And the last group, who are called theorists, they like <coughs> to learn by knowing what is the theory and the background, where has this material come from. And they like doing research. <coughs> okay. So this is just a small uh, example of how this work of teacher training that we have developed through the MCE and how we are implementing at Europe level is helping the madrasas and now we have had other communities and other community madrasas come and say, you know, can you assist us with this? And we have now recently, as Koej, embarked on, on our uh, teacher training programs 
uh, where we are taking teachers from other non-Koja community madrasas as well. And we have found funding for that and we are supporting that. So I hope that this work, which is leading edge, helps the madrasas as teachers and as students and I hope the parents find its impact when you get these uh, children coming home. The last thing I want to say is that one of the role of COEGE is that uh, supporting, especially supporting small Jamaats. You see, as COEGE, we've got three or nearly four big <coughs> Jamaats of the 16. Uh, Stanmore, Hydri, Birmingham, and to a certain extent, Paris. The rest of the madrasas are small madrasas with limited resources, mainly human resources and other resources. And I think the role of COEG is to support the smaller jamaats and the smaller madrasas to be able to deliver the message of Islam and the Ahlul Bayt. And if the madrasas and the teachers, if they can do one thing as a minimum, apart from teaching all this material, is when the child comes out of the madrasa and goes to the open world and maintains their identity as Muslim and as a Shia, I think you have done a fantastic job in the madrasa as teachers and as parents. If that we keep as our key goal, and that stays for the rest of the life. Because, uh, let me tell you a story, and I'll end with that. Uh, there was a Christian uh, uh, taxi driver. And I was having a discussion with him. And, you know, he said, what is one thing about Muslims and Islam, which is why it is going to reign the world, is that when a Muslim is a Muslim, even if he is not practicing, he will always maintain his identity and say he's a Muslim. So even if they're not praying, even if they're not fasting, he accepts that he or she is a Muslim and what that means is that he believes in Allah, whether he's practicing or not. And I think if in an environment like the West, if we can maintain that within our community, I think Allah will bless us all and bless all of you as volunteers and as community members. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's been a great pleasure being here. to learn about the right pathway. We have been blessed to have teachers who are knowledgeable and practicing. Our Jamaat's resident scholar, Madrasa's academic lead, Sheikh Abbas Ismail, has been very generous in sharing his knowledge with us. The Holy Prophet وسلم, had said in his final Hajj speech, I am leaving among you two weighty things, the one being the Book of Allah, in which there is right guidance and light. To hold fast to the Book of Allah and adhere to it. He exhorted us to hold fast to the Book of Allah and then said, The second are the members of my household. I remind you of your duties to the members of my family. Salawat. Our scholars are the ones who remind us of our duties towards these two weighty things. As is the tradition of our annual day, we are now to listen to our annual lecture. This year, Sheikh has kindly chosen the issue of duties of a learner. Let us welcome him with a loud salawat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Respected elders, brothers, sisters, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Do you want the good news or the bad news? The bad news. Bad news. Bad news is I've been given 10 minutes to speak. You want the good news? I'm only going to take five. 
First of all, let me pay tribute and share my appreciation with our uh, outgoing principal, Sayyid Kamar Abbas. He's led the madrasa for a number of years and 10 years. And really, his leadership has been very much appreciated, very dedicated, very strong. And what can we say, Kamar Bhai, except for Jazakumullah, may Allah reward you with the wasil of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. May you have increased tawfiq to serve here, elsewhere, wherever you are, the Shia community, inshallah. With salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah, Allah, Allah. Secondly, appreciation goes to the World Federation for, again, tirelessly, fearlessly, in the face of many challenges, you'll be surprised that how many challenges would come about when trying to do something as noble as coming up with a new curriculum. But Noshad by you, yourself, your team, uh, you face these challenges and alhamdulillah, we can see the fruits now. And may Allah again accept all your efforts and uh, give you increased tawfiq. Thirdly is my brief address for today. And that is um, around the duties of a learner, not wanting to take much time. I'm going to address it on three levels. And these are the three key levels of any madrasa. Number one, the students. Number two, the teachers. And number three, the parents. In all of these three, if anyone in this room thinks that the training and nurturing of your children is the responsibility of madrasa or resident alim or jamaat, then I'm very sorry to tell you, you are wrong. It is first and foremost your responsibility as parents to train your children. They spend more time in your homes than anywhere else. They have more interaction with you than they have with me and any other teacher. So as parents, we as a madrasa request you, implore you, that make your home spiritual environments. We do not want the next generation to be worse than us. We want them to be better than us. I want my children to be better than me. You want your children to be better than you. We don't want a situation where people are just identifying as Shia Muslims. We want situations where they are practicing as Shia Muslims in a much more profound way than they do today. So that is the first thing. Parents, please, in your home environments, help this general approach to nurturing and training our children through your home environment. Number two, the teachers. As you know, we have many conversations, we have many trainings and all of these things. Inshallah, we teachers as well, we need to have taqwa, we need to have fear of God, we need to have consciousness of Allah in everything that we do. And thirdly, the students. The students this year, I want to make it Again, like last year, if you remember last year what I said, I said that our goal last year, if we were to choose one thing, it would be to make sure every child in the madrasa has perfect wuzu and perfect namaz. I really don't think we were successful completely. I think we were partially successful. So let's make this year the year of complete success in the wajibat, mainly wuzu and namaz. And then whoever is able to do that, we can go on to things like duas and azan and ikama and these things. But at least the fundamentals should be there. So what we're going to do is we're going to work very closely with you all to make sure your wazu is correct, your namaz is correct. And hopefully um, that will be our objective for this year. I don't really have much more to say. So as you can see, I think I even made it four minutes and not even five. So let me bid you farewell, inshallah, with Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I would like to invite last year's principal, Kamar al Khan, to come and present last year's report to us. Please welcome him with a loud salawat. <laughs> Dear President of the Kuwaj, Rashad Bhai, President Fayaz Bhai, Abbas Bhai, and all the parents, and definitely my lovely children, 
Assalamu alaikum. I didn't hear the salam back from the children. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, that's better. Um, you ask, as is the tradition, this is the time I actually talk about the last year, what we achieved and what we didn't, and uh, set some goals for the next year. But as it is our 10th anniversary and 10th time you are bearing me standing here, so I thought I would just go through some reflections. Reflections from the 10 years. We started and where we are and how and mashallah the work has been done at bigger level. I will just look at the local context and see what has happened and what has been difficult for us. When we started, we actually set out ourselves a mission statement. And the mission statement had two parts. First was to achieve the knowledge in different aspects of religion. And second was to provide our students the confidence within themselves to go out so that they are not partially Muslim, only in their Imam Barga in home. They can actually practice confidently in the wider world. And Alhamdulillah, as I will share, I've seen it happening on, a, on an ongoing basis. We started in 2007. End of 2007, there was a consultation meeting in Essex Jamaat. That was the year actually I moved to Chelmsford. I was living in Harlow, obviously coming to Essex Jamaat. But two uh, very senior uh, members of our community, respectable, there none of them is here, I can see, um, who's Dr. Uh, Tipu Naqvi and uh, uh, Sir Dr. or Surgeon. Talib Jati, they basically started the process and pushed and they were actually, let's start something. And I remember the first consultation meeting sitting in the uh, our old center where a president of that time, Aqib Hai, Merali, he turned to me and said, do a feasibility report, which I presented. And uh, tried to make it, if, I, if the people who were there, they will remember, I tried to make, uh, present some facts, but I tried to make it as light as possible. And basically, the outcome was a madrasa. So 2008 January, we hired Lawford Mead School. And I'm quite often asked the question, so why were we there and why we have moved here? So I blame our lovely sister, uh, Sister Akila Manji, who will be here. I say we just follow her. Whichever school she joins as a teacher, we go and hire that school. And that's why we are here. Now, Ten years later, we are standing here after completion of that. We actually came up with a simple structure first. At, at the end of the day, we all have got a duty. And my vision is, like Abbas Bhai said, to make our children a generation which can join the army of Imam Zamana. And I have shared it many, many times in my speeches and with you guys quite often, that I, do, I wouldn't have a clue what Imam's army is going to be like. But when I look at the history, we definitely know that some of the companions and how the Imam Hussein's army was like. We need to learn that. We need to take inspirations from Habib Nimazahir, John, uh, and uh, Abbas, Ali Akbar, and all the martyrs, and especially Muslim Ibn Aqeel, which I often, often talk about. Muslim Ibn Aqeel was the ambassador of Imam Hussein at that time. And I hope these children the ambassador of Imam Hussein in the coming years. Just some reflections and some pictures. That was the first day we actually arrived at Lawford Mead School. A small handful of the students, I think there were 16 of the children. And, uh, but we still, I had that commitment, I said I will still divide them in different classes. I will still put them in different levels. Because if we want it, we will be doing and no matter if I and some and other teachers, fantastic ones, Shabnam Bai has been there for, from the very beginning. She will remember Akila Bai, Saima Bai, Saira. They will remember that actually we said, even if there is one student, we'll teach that student. And that is how we met and had the, our first assembly. In 2000, by 2009, we were a bit more consolidated. And we actually started uh, my next vision make the students friends of each other so that they love coming to Madrasa. Because they don't want to come to see an oldie like me, but they want to meet their friends. So if we can make good friendships, 
get them to sports day, put them in a football team, make them actually bicker about each other. Ah, no, 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 no. But they will come and tell, tell, he has taken my ball, he hasn't taken. I love it when they do it. Because that means that actually they rely on each other too. The sports day of 2009. By 2010, we took some more steps. This is the picture when in 2009 we went to see the Islamic exhibition at uh, British Museum. Let's take a step out. Let's take the children out, make them confident, get them to the real world, speak to their schools, tell their schools what they are learning. On Ashura day, on Arbain, send letters to schools to say what is it. So they feel so taking a step outside of our own. So he is trying to find out where is he standing, isn't it? Next one, please. Let's take a step out. Go to the BBC. In 2010, uh, 11, I think the sports day was there. Sorry, I can't see Sister Sh uh, Sister Akila. Is she not here? She's gone just outside. Um, she kindly represented us to go on the BBC Essex to present the work that we were doing, the students and things. And, and, and that was broadcasted and telecast. So uh, we, let's actually be a bit more confident, reaching out. We have been doing it before. Let's actually involve the larger community, get the speakers from outside, get them to do an annual lecture. At that time, we sadly did not have a police in Italian, um, but we had fantastic support from other people. This is a picture of, some of you will know, Sister Amina in Los, who came and did the annual lecture of our annual day at that time. Uh, and did it fantastic. And usually the lectures were published in the magazine and her lecture was also published. By 2013, we were doing it before, and you can see in this picture on a sports day, let's get now people in now, and actually tell them, sorry, uh, what we were doing. This is the Essex County Council Chairman, Chair Lady, or Chairperson, uh, Kay Swinton, who visited us at the, our sports day. And we had, at Love for Me School, we also had a tradition of having a mother's uh, football match with Madrasa team and the foot school football team. Uh, that was just after that. As you can see, some of the people are just looking after the lady. And I almost always, Simon Burns, as you would know, Sir Simon Burns now, who was the health minister at that time, was a regular visitor here. And basically, he, he and uh, Miss K. Swinton, I always got very good emails, which I shared with you guys as well, they, how impressed they were with the coherent community that we had. That does not mean we leave our values behind. It's a picture from 2014. I'm sad to see Momin is not here. I've seen him. This is our fantastic friend Momin, who is standing on the celebration of 12th Imam's birthday. Let's say salawat for 12th Imam. So when we are reaching out, we have to look at it, be strong in our own roots. Strong and confident. And this is what we can do. The, give the children the happiness that there is a Christmas out there, but there is a Shabi Barat out there. There is an Eid there. There is a Ramazan. They started doing things which were looking at their own values. Another picture from 2015. You can see, I think it's Samina, who is reciting something on the Madrasa annual Majlis Day. So, mashallah, proud of children. They look at their values and they every year organize a Madrasa Majlis. And previously, we had like maybe three or four people deciding, and this year I, we had something like 17 children who wanted to come and decide something for Imam Hussain. And then there are other ways of remembering our roots as well. So the next one I will have a quick, quick look at, sorry, I'll, which is later on. But this is another one, our initiative for every year. We will, not, we will go out and support the charity. This is the 2016 picture when collected a lot of things and did a lot of volunteer work for chess, a charity for the homeless, which is a big issue now. We are confident we will go out and we will help. And when we are helping the other communities as well, we have got a responsibility towards the larger community that we live in as well, I believe. And are my children, and I always use the word my children, my children need to learn about the real world. Many of us, or our, at least our parents, were refugees themselves. They might be homeless. Do we even remember them? 
and my children and I was proud to say they came out and did a lot of work. Sticking to the roots and also remembering the Imam in different ways. This is, uh, obviously you can't see the faces, if I remember correctly, Abbas, Banin and Zahra, is that true? They actually, on our last majlis, they, nearly everybody broke into tears. <coughs> this is the scene of uh, the passing away of Sakina in the, in the prison of, and dungeon of Shah. <coughs> These are my pride. These are my really proud moments of the last many years. Not because I achieved that, because I have got children who will come in here and I will learn from them. I will learn from them how to be pure and innocent and not have any contamination from outside world. And let them make each other's friends and learn from each other. But provide that spiritual environment where they can actually bring that innocence and development. Salam. I forgot to say another thing. Theme of the year. Every year we have picked up a theme, haven't we? Last year's theme was difficult, wasn't it? Now I will ask you guys, little ones, which class you were in? Ali Abbas? Kashani class. Um, Shaliza, which class were you in? Kashani, oh, that was easy, you just cheated. <laughs> there. Okay, let me look at that. Mariam. You will learn, remember when you get the magazine back with you. You were in Nuri class. So we looked at the Hadith collectors. We actually wrote about them, and inshallah, at the end of it, you will have the full explanation of Hadith collectors. And some reflections which I will quickly go through. In 2007 meeting, I stood up and as I said, I made it light and I told a joke, which was about a Scottish peasant who lived in the very cold, freezy mountains. One day, on a Sunday morning, the bishop of the, or the clergyman, he was standing, he said, Sunday morning, nobody will turn up. So what do we do? He was standing at the top and he saw a peasant coming through the real snowing, freezing, minus 24, making his way to the church. He opened the church, set him there, put the heating on and said, you know, because there's nobody standing up, there's not going to be any lecture today. So the peasant said to him, Father, I don't know about you, but I, <coughs> but I know something about me. If I had a lot of fodder, food, for the sheep, and I had only one sheep hungry, I will not let that sheep go hungry. So it didn't matter that we had only 16 children, we had a duty. And people, were, I thought, got inspired by that. Actually, the story doesn't stop there. What happened to the, that uh, father? He went on the altar, he said, you're right, I'll give you a lecture. He set the peasant in the front and gave him a one hour very strong lecture, like I'm giving you now. And after the lecture, he said to the, to the peasant, any question, my son? And the peasant said, Father, I forgot to tell you something. Even if, if I had that lot of fodder and just one sheep hungry, I'm not going to show that fodder down that sheep's throat only your by itself. I will at least get some more. But anyway, we have done it. My next reflection. And this is what we were just listening about, the theories of learning. Uh, some of you will know my other roles as well. I'm a senior lecturer at Cambridge University and I sit on the curriculum committee for final year for medicine. And this theory we come across again and again there as well. Whatever syllabus, whatever medicine I'm going to teach my students, when they see a patient, they will have a question. And they will come back and ask that question. And same happens in the mother's side. Uh, we talked about the theorists, uh, the theory of James Parkins, uh, I believe it is. In, and you will know that actually by 1980s, the theory was that about 50 to 56 percent of the Western students were theorists, now, asking the question why. Now we are in 70 to 78 percent. The students ask the question why. And that is why I asked you guys when I enter, what was the news article we read? Is there any question about that? And we should be prepared to take those questions.
Abbas bhai already hit the nail on the head. Our students will only take us this manual, this everything seriously if all of us did. How important is it for us to come to madarsa or to learn from Imam Hussain's examples? I can go to my list, listen to, sat there all the time, maybe I fell half, um, half asleep there. Did I learn anything? And I say to all of us, but actually, when we go to a majlis, if you are not coming back at least with one point back, we need to analyze ourselves again. Same applies to madrasa. Do we learn and then we apply that with the spirituality as adults first. If we can, our children will learn. They will not do what we tell them. They will do what we do. This is very important. And the students will learn theory only if they are convinced if it is practical. This is the theory which we quite a lot apply in the education world as well. Next one. I've already said that, so I'll go through it quickly. Um, yeah. I know this is a contentious subject. I know in other madaris, everywhere you go, I've been involved in other sorts of madarsas since late 80s. And this is a question we ask ourselves again and again. How do we assess our children? Exam, salat assessment board. And if there is any assurance, I can tell you that there is the same way the medical school's examination has changed five times in the last 15 years for that reason, because we do not know what clicks everybody. So it has been challenging, it has been difficult. I tell you what, despite doing whatever other jobs I do, as doctor, as consultant, as safety medical director, as a lecturer, I still find this job is the best. When you come and teach your mother, or you play with them, you talk to them, and you tell them off at times. How many students are here who I have told off? Hands up. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Don't embarrass me anymore. <laughs> there are few. But important thing is, I hope they have found some friendships here, which we all have. My personal thanks goes to everyone who has helped me over the last 10 years, but definitely to the people who have been here, like the administration teams, the names are there for you to know, you know who you are, who I have really been in debt all this time. The teachers, really, uh, like uh, we just heard, uh, like what I said, that majority of la are there here are ladies, and I really, can't believe how they find the time and develop themselves and come here and deliver all this education. We have had this initiative of having the parents' representative. Amreen was last year. Uh, Amreen and uh, our lovely daughter, student representative Mariam, really did hard work all this time. So say a loud salawat for them. Thank you very much to both of you, really with majlis, to iftar, to everything. So we get back to work from next this week and the next week. The year planner will be at the back of the magazine, which will be distributed in a second. Make note of that and inshallah, we'll get it. Uh, and these were the days when we are not in madrasa. When I start getting the phone calls at the end of the Ramadan, when are we opening the madrasa again? I do not know why, because they just want the children off from home, or do they really want them to learn here? But I, but I remember last year we talked about, shall we delay opening the mother's up by a week or two? I said, please don't do that. Because I already had about five teachers asking me, parents asking me, when are they coming back? Because teachers, the students are on our nerves. But already, they want to come back. So these are the, but these are the dates we will not have it. This is not sure, so we'll let you know as the year goes by. And this is the last for the year plan. Holy Prophet kindly, like all his kind things go, best people are those who are the most useful to others. And we look at the new team to take over from us. I finish my 10 years with a humble thank you to all of you and I know that you will know, have even better time because the next team, although they are shuffling because they have always been around, but they will more effective leadership than I have done for 10 years. So please forgive me for any of the shortcomings I had for all these years. 
next year, I hope, um, so I know I don't put that, but I, this is the time I, everybody knows Sister Shabnam who is going to take her from Prince Pilar. Loud salawat for Sister Shabnam Alji. Oh. She doesn't want to stand up, but you will know because she will tell you off. Our deputy principal, Sister Akila Manji, you said that she has walked out at the moment? Okay. So let's say Lord Salvat for Sister Akila as well. <laughs> the, there will be obviously academic lead because we will have Tarbiya curriculum and it will not be Akhlaq, Tariq, Faith. There will be different ways of leading the team. Abbas Bhai is already here. Quran, obviously, teachings of Quran will continue to go on. Sen has been looked after by Saira, Hidai, Akila, Sister Akila. So they will continue. Uh, Sister Farah Sheikh has always done such fantastic help with the, with the students um, with the, who need some extra help. And Tarbiya curriculum will be looked after by and the, all the liaison with Sister Saira and Sister Akila. Salawat for them. This is the list of the name developed by Sister Shabnam. She will be speaking to, if your name is there, just be aware. She will get you to do work. So there will be the teachers and students coordination, parents coordination, academic function, social, lots of things which will be happening. So I will leave it to Sister to approach you and actually discuss your roles with you. Next one. The support team will stay. Uh, Brother Mohammed Ismail, is he here? He's there. He's kindly going to join us as well. Uh, student representative team is yet to be decided, but we have two youth champions this year. Fazal Abbas, there, and, and our daughter Lidai, there. Salabat for them. The idea of putting these names. If you are not there, please get to know them because hopefully we, they will all need your help as I have needed your help all this time. This year's name. Remember we had band A to F uh, as Nashad Bhai kindly explained. And one of those classes, because it's such a large class, we will divide them into girls and boys anyway because that's the time we will do that. But this time, the theme is the ladies in Karbala. And when I was asked to write these names, it was quite emotional. But I just wrote it and I hope I'm not going to read because it's absolutely emotional thing to read about these names. And inshallah, the children who are there will come to you and you'll be allocated those classes. All the way, the, trib the, the way these ladies did to win the battle of Karbala later on after the event of it. I, this is my usual slide which I always say everybody participates and everybody should participate. We still struggle at times and, but with your help we'll get somewhere. I know I have rushed it a bit because I know that this is the time you were all waiting for. So I will start with the certificate distributions. We will divide the time from now onwards. First of all, to acknowledge all the students who attended the madrasa and did really well last year. They will all receive their certificates. The younger class, which last year was Kuleni, Suduk, and Tusi class. Hands up who are the students in there? Year one, two, three, four. Good. Inshallah, you did so well Auntie Shabla Manti actually told me to get special presents for you as well. So you will all get a CD, which hopefully you can listen, listen to, and you will also get a book to read. Who likes reading? No. But hopefully your mom and dad will actually read it for you. They are the stories for children to read. So, um, after that, we will uh, come to the awards. Firstly, I will like to acknowledge all the student teachers and the volunteers who have helped us all these years. <laughs> and I, a six Jamaat, more than me, a six Jamaat would like to say thank you to them. And in the end, we will come to the trophies. So first of all, 
I would like to give the certificates for the fantastic participation last year. Can I request two people, the kind teachers, to come to the stage and give these certificates away? Uh, they will be Sister Saima Ali, Sister Lord Salvato Saima Baji. I don't think Sister Rubab is here, but I will know another fantastic volunteer, uh, Ridai. Will you kindly come to the stage and give these sir? Of certificates, Salawat. So, first student to come and receive their certificate and CD and book, Ishal Shah. Salawat. Some students are not here, so I will try to go quickly through that. Um, Ayat Iqbal. Salawat. Salawat Farayid. In the meantime, shall we get Atifa Ahmadi? Atifa Ahmadi. Salawat. Maryam Ali. Salawat. Maria Mani is not here. Milad Ismail. Milad Ismail. Salawat. <laughs> Ali Rasuli. Salawat. Jahan Ali Dadi Salawat Amir Ahmadi okay, Now we go to Sadduk class Zuhair Jafri Zehra Parsad, is she here? No. Salawat for her. Zahra Yaqubi. Sozan Ali Dadi. Is she here? Salawat for Sozan. Zahra Fatma Hussain. Yusuf Rajabi. Ali Asghar Haji. Muhammad Hassan Rahat. Muhammad Shahriyar Haider. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Salawat. My experience has always been students love it when they take it from their own teachers. Um, so can I request Sister Shabnam and Sister Farah to come for the next lot of certificates? Salawat. These are the students who will be included in trophies. So first of all, we will they just receive the certificate now. Uh, Mujahid, sorry. So can you say light, uh, loud Salawat for Mujahid Ratan C. Now, 
I will have to ask uh, if they are here. Muhammad Hadi Falla. No, he's not here. Salawat for Hadi. Uh, Mehdi Muzaffari. Salawat. Adan Zaidi. No. Salawat. Mohammed Shah, salawat for him. Vani Akbar. Now salawat for Vaniya. Fantastic student. Hello, Ad. Hello, Ania. For the next uh, uh, certificate, can I request uh, Sister Zina Jaddi and Sister Ruby Nakwi? Hello, Ad. This is a large class, so just bear with us. I think some of them may not be here. Armin Ali. Salawat. Muhammad Ahmadi. Daniel Heather. Sophia Ali. Leon Ismail. Asibullah Ramazi. Salawat. Azeen Zaidi. Shahzil Fatma Rahat. Malika Zamani. Rayan Haji. Fatma Zahra Haider. Banin Zedi. For Kashani class um, and the girls first, so can I ask Sister Akila and Sister Saira to come and give their words? Salawat. Husna Muzaffari. Salawat. Zahra Jafri. Salawat. Sahar Haji. Salawat. Let me say salawat for Sister Akila and join us. Shiri Jamshed. Zehra Zaidi. This is the time when uh, the students start getting taller than the teacher. <laughs> Shaliza Rahat. Zamina Haji. Oh, 
زارا علی ایمان اقبال زینت حاجی مہدی رسولی ابا رضا فاطمہ رضا فاطمہ احمدی ہانا بابرکار فار دا بوائز آف کاشانی کلاس کین ریکویسٹ اور شیخ عباس بھائی شیخ عباس اسماعیل کم ٹو دا اسٹیج پلیز ٹو گیو دا ایوارڈس تھینک یو ویری مچ اینڈ برادر منتظر حاجی سلام علیکم عباس زیدی زہیر جعفری حسین زیدی حسین جدی علی عباس حاجی سید حانی عباس زین محمد وال جی سمت رسولی And for Nuri class, can I request Sister Zeenat Zaidi and uh, our Sister Ambreen to come to the stage. Salawat. And loud salawat for Maryam Fala. Muhammad Zain Ali. محمد اقبال اماد مصطفیٰ علی سوگند علی دادی ودا جعفری سید ادریس مظفری سلوات فار آل آف آئی ول ناؤ ریور بیک ٹو اوور ٹینتھ اینیورسری سو دے آر لاٹس آف پیپل ہو آر ہیلپنگ ایٹ دا مومنٹ ایز والنٹیئرس سو آئی ول بی ریکویسٹنگ those volunteers to please come and uh, receive their acknowledgement from our Essex Jamaat. So firstly, uh, can I request uh, uh, Brother Fayaz Haji and Brother Akbar Muhammad Ali to come to the stage. Salawat for them. There have been a lot of hard work which they have been doing all this year and the previous year. So first, the, as an acknowledgement, can I request Sister Safiya Rasooli 
to come to the stage. Can I request Sister Shabnam as well to come and join us in, on the stage, please? Salawat. Next this is award was to Brother Zubair Zedi. Salawat for him. And then uh, the whole family which has been extremely instrumental all these years. Uh, but I know that some members are not here. So Sister Zenith Kapasi, uh, Salawat for her. She is not here, but her son is here, so I hope she can receive the award on his, her behalf. Salawat. <laughs> Sister Zenith has been instrumental in like all of the time behind the doors. When the annual day comes, when the um, sports day comes, you can rely on her to actually just put us with a whip in order. Um, can I can I hear a loud salawat for? Our parents' representative, Sayyidah Ambreen Rahat. <laughs> Ambreen has been fantastic in last two years helping us as the parents' representative and also as a volunteer teacher at times as well. So, Salawat. <laughs> I think we will see Fazal again and again. Um, his sister, who is not here, who actually worked so hard in the last year for Quran teaching, but generally has been very quiet but very active, Batul Kapasi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Our some teachers who are very quiet but very, very uh, instrumental in uh, leading the children especially teaching Quran and I really don't know what will we do without them. Uh, Sister Farishta Ismail. <laughs> now I think he can legitimately receive his award. Our all-time IT specialist Fazal Abbas Kapasi. Whenever he wants, you want to make a video, anything, any gadgets need sorting out at home, go and find him, but after the program. Um, our little children are very well supported by our sister Rubab Ratansi. Salawat for her. She is not here, but can I invite actually her son to come and receive the award? For our first. Sister has really looked after our young students very, very well in the last year. Another volunteer very quietly supporting the students, although uh, in a way, uh, in a, behind the doors more than others, uh, Sister Komal Heather. And um, another very quiet person, but actually she has been helping in the younger classes, and inshallah she will keep on helping. Uh, Sister Fizar Bal. Another sister who joined us on the in the last year or so, uh, but has been very good in helping all over around um, Sister Zina Zedi. There are lots of uh, volunteers 
who have helped uh, all around. I think there are some of them who very quietly behind the doors, but also on the forefront. And these few other awards will go to the people in their acknowledgement for they have been working for day in and day out for many, many, many years. And I really don't know how to thank them for this work. Uh, sister has been here from the very beginning. As I explained, her husband was the one to push it. She quietly actually supported it. Sister Zina Chaddi. For the last 10 years, she has been coming every day, every week, and has been supporting her, reaching. Salawat for her. Our brother is not here today because uh, he had a very uh, suddenly had to drop out because of family illness. Say so Hussein Bhai, he was our last parent representative and a very active person, especially plays a lot of football on the sports. Salawat for him. Um, I know this sister actually had said to me that she didn't want to come and receive her award because she has worked so tirelessly behind the scene. But I think what I will do is actually request to go and give the award to her. Sister Farah Sheikh. She I did the technical part. She said to me she, will come, she wouldn't come to the stage. She has been so really good and the children who she has supported, I know they, not just their parents, myself and all the parents here are so much indebted to her. Um, out of all this work, obviously all of you know behind the scene, front of the scene, our very knowledgeable resident are in Sheikh Abbas. He's come and receive it. Salawat. <laughs> She has not teaching at the moment, but she taught for many, many years, and I know that, obviously, Rizwana Abbas. <laughs> Yesterday, I was going to teach somewhere else. I was doing uh, medical students. My medical director asked me, uh, are, you, are you going home, uh, going to like, where are you going to teach, at home? I said, no, there I only get the lectures. <laughs> uh, again, this will be his fourth entry, I think. Uh, our very, very important person, as everybody knows, any problem, who do we go to? Minaz Bhai. He's not here today, but his award goes to Fazal Abbas again. Salawat. So now the whole family is complete. As I explained to you earlier, um, Talib Bhai was one of the person who pushed us. Second one was Tipu Bhai, and again, like Talib Bhai, Tipu Bhai did not come to teach himself, but his, his wife has been so good from the very word go, from the very first day she has been here, Sister Ruby Nakhvi. Very important person, many different roles. You must have heard this name on the presentation, and you will be contacting her all the time. Um, thank you very much for all the work, Saira Haji. There are some teachers who, obviously, as you saw, not here, who have helped us in the past. Um, let's say Lord Salawat, I invited, but maybe for some reason they couldn't be here. Say Lord Salawat for Imran Panjawani. Again, um, I, I will lose, I will start to these words. 
don't know what, where we'll be, we'll be without her. Definitely, this is cool, like, like I said earlier. Sister Akhila Manji. <laughs> the sister was outside when I was saying, the reason we hire schools, we find out where Sister Akhila is working, we go and hire that school. So that we do something funny, she gets the blame. <laughs> Salawat. Uh, another brother who supported us a lot um, in the first many years and taught here, uh, obviously he couldn't be here. Uh, I will request his son to actually come and receive it, uh, Dr. Tahir Akbar. And again, the person who keeps us in line a lot of times, um, and uh, we have uh, actually just brother and sister are sort of teasing to each other, Sister Sayamadi. And I have asked for everybody's forgiveness. I will definitely ask for sister's forgiveness all for all these years. talked about the people who keep us in line, who have got a whip, who actually go and shout the loudest. Muntazir Haji. <laughs> Salawat. <laughs> Even if I would have said the name, everybody would know. You need these people. <laughs> no, no. Obviously, uh, when, I start, when we started, our biggest worry was Quran. And how will we actually be able to discharge the duties well? I really do not know how she does it, but she has fantastically done it all these years, trained other people to deliver it, and my sons as well, as well as I have learned so much from her, Sister Shibnam, Shabnam Malji. We'll just break up from a normal script now. Uh, I'm not on the speech list today, so, but I will do it now anyway. Uh, I stand here after 10 years as the president, well, not 10 years as president of Essex, but 10 years of a madrasa. And uh, I stand here partly sad that uh, Dr. Kamar Abbas, after four years of badgering me that he has got so much work and his workload is so much, he now needs to step down. But every year I used to say, no, next year, we'll look at it next year. We'll look at it next year. But today I sadly have to say that as the Essex Jamaat, we have accepted that uh, he can step down now. But I'm very happy that we have got a very able principal now among us, uh, Shabnam Bai, who has finally accepted our request to step up as the principal and we have full uh, uh, confidence that uh, she will now lead this madrasa for another 10 years. Hopefully I will not be the president of a section month in 10 years time. I'm sure there will be someone standing up here. But please recite, uh, sorry, please recite Salawat for Kamar Bai and Shabnam Bai for all the years that they have been serving. I will, we have a citation for uh, Kamabai on behalf of the Jamaat. I will uh, request, well, I'll read it myself. In the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. In recognition and appreciation of exemplary voluntary services to the Shia Ithnashi Madrasa of Essex and humanity at large, Al Hajj Dr. Kamar Abbas. You served as the principal of the Shia Ithnashi Madrasa of Essex since its inception in January 2007. You have, with the Essex Jamaat, 
a record of dedicated service in various capacities for the last 20 years. Your fervor for volunteerism is not limited to within the community. As a consultant within the Harlow Hospice, you have been fortunate to have gained a wide range of volunteer experiences and fame in other areas of welfare work. What is even more exemplary was the zeal and perseverance that you and your team served the madrasa. Your passion, enthusiasm, unparalleled energy, coupled with the humble approach, working for the betterment of the community knows no bounds. You pioneered the madrasa, whose fruits are now being seen by this community with a legacy of nurturing piety in the children of our community. On behalf of the Shia Ithnashri Jamaat of Essex, we pray to the Almighty to bless you and your family and may he continue to grant you good health so you can continue your exemplary long catalogue of volunteerism. I have therefore the honour and privilege to bestow upon you the Ali Radha shield in recognition of your selfless services to the Essex community and humanity at large. Al-Haj Fayaz Haji, President, Essex Jamaat. I now request Dr. Akbar to present Dr. Kamar Bas with the Ali Radha shield from Muhammad Inwal Muhammad Salawat. and also the appreciation shield as well. Finally, I'll just say thank you to Kamar Abbas and uh, I'll ask his forgiveness for any, anything that we have done wrong as the Essex uh, EC. I now request uh, Fazal who has got a surprise for Dr. Kamar Abbas on behalf of the students. Muhammad Inwal Muhammad Salawat. Uh, Dr. Kamar, normally I see when the sh these shields are presented, we don't see the people again. So this doesn't mean that we don't want you here. We need to see you here. This is just an appreciation on behalf of the Essex Jamaat. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, if I would have known I will get presents, I would have left before. Then I'll come back and then I'll leave up again. And then I, no, thank you. Uh, I'm lost for words for this, so I will leave it. Uh, as you know, you've got better people than me in the community. Definitely, definitely that. Everyone who has been here is uh, just like themselves. I will quickly, before my next goes, uh, move on to the final awards. Uh, these are the awards. Sorry. Now we will give the awards for the ex uh, for their exemplary work over the year. Firstly, <coughs> Az Zahra Award. These are the awards which are given for their conduct, for their contribution, for their progress in the madrasa, regardless of exam results or anything. So the teachers at the end of the year, I will ask the teachers that actually who will they nominate for these awards for their 
fantastic work in the madrasa so today we have got five names i will can i request sister akila again and sister saima haji again to give these awards salawat these are the teachers awards so please uh, even more uh, have more pride in yourself the students all of you have behaved very well have gone on to learn gone on to contribute but also supported other one of the other criteria was to support other students to learn and also be contribution to the madrasa itself so there are five people who got more votes than one first award goes to mujahid ratan si salawat Second award goes to Rayan Haji. Salawat. <laughs> Next award, Azhera, uh, for somebody who is very quiet but very disciplined in the class, Samad Rasuli. next one a young lady very nice very fantastic contributions vania ikbal last one goes to again a quiet boy but very nice very productive boy yusuf rajavi now uh, academic awards for the year's performance firstly to present the al murtaza awards the six awards i will get sister Shabnam Balji and Abbas Bhai to come on the stage. Salawat. First, Al Murtaza Award to Muhammad Iqbal. Salawat. second academic award al murtaza goes to zehra zaidi next al murtaza academic award goes to fatima ahmadi Next, Al Murtaza Academic Award to Mujahid Ratan Si. The next Al Murtaza Award Academic Award is to Sahar Haji.
the next al murtaza academic award to maryam falla and for last six academic award for al mustafa award can i request brother fayaz haji and brother noshad bhai to come here and give these awards salawat first al mustafa academic award to hussein jaddi Next Al Mustafa Academic Award to Hani Abbas. Next Al Mustafa Academic Award to Zain Muhammad Walji. Next Al Mustafa Academic Award last three be around Leon Ismail Second uh, and the next one second last Al Mustafa Academic Award to Zamina Haji And the last Al Mustafa Academic Award mashallah this year to Shaliza Rahat every year we hear the bubbles of wisdom fantastic lectures and this we should be acknowledging him every year but just uh, our appreciation for learning from him for az zainab annual lecture award can we kindly present it to sheikh abbas I think uh, again I will finish uh, the day with the uh, attitude to prophet and alibad who have given us the opportunity to be here and to be able to do whatever in our little capacity we can do however the work keeps on going on and our young children the important thing for us to all of us to remember is that you are like sheikh abbas said our vision our really hope is our praise you are better than the generation you are so then inshallah please do learn but also to participate contribute academic is one part of it but the spiritual power the spiritual connection you have with holy prophet is the best can i hear a loud salawat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that we come to the closure of the program May I request, like Maryam had said before, for the parents, we will now be offering salat because that's in about ten minutes' time. So, can we actually make wuzu? The parents and the adults can actually use the corridor uh, washrooms, whereas the children can. Can I request them to go to their own classrooms?
and do the wuzu there and come back and actually do the namaz here after salat we will be serving the refreshment for muhammad ali muhammad salawat uh, if if we can move then that will help the volunteers to get the salat preparation here thank you <laughs>